students, today we're going to start with the 100 dresses. It's a beautiful chapter which teaches us the value of inclusion. What is inclusion? To accept people who are different from us and to realize that we are all the same. We ourselves create differences, you know? Like whether it is because of the economic status, because of the names that people have, because of their appearance, because of their culture, their background. So we start creating these differences, right? And uh, sometimes uh, it is our ignorance also, because we are not aware about uh, people, we're not uh, aware about uh, certain cultures, about the background, the language, about their dressing and all. So we think that these people are very different, right? Okay, before I start this, can you just recollect when things were normal and you had an offline classroom, when a new student joined your class, how was your reaction towards that person? How was your reaction? You were curious about the person? Did you make friends with that person easily? Did you make that child comfortable in the classroom? Yes? So all these things here, or we made the child realize that you are a newcomer, we already have our fixed friends and all, so you don't have any place over here. Did anyone of you behave like that? Was that person isolated? Was it? You're curious about it? Yes, uh, that a new person has come. Okay. But uh, what about it? Did you try to make that person comfortable? What about people in uh, your, what about the students in your class who are different? Well, of course, maybe someone who's uh, quite short or maybe someone who's quite, uh, you know, like, yeah, plump uh, and heavy or big and tall. What do you do? Do you make fun of them? Do you make fun of them? Yes, we do. And does it happen every day? Or is it just once a while? Or you have kept name uh, for the students here, your friends, you call them because of by their appearances or because of their name or because of things they like, is it? Right? So you know what here, we are like this only. It is very, very difficult for us to accept for people who are different, right? So have you ever wondered what that person might be thinking? We keep on calling that person, you know, a funny name every day. Is it a nice thing to do? Is it a nice thing? No, it is not. So how do you behave with outsiders? You go to the shop, you go to the marketplace, you go to the cinema hall, you see people from different communities, you see people from different countries also. What is your reaction? To stand and stare at them? Do you? Or you realize that, okay, they are here, they are welcome to live in any part of the country. They are most welcome. Are we like this? So we are there not ready to accept people who are different. In a school, what happens, which is there? What is this here? You know, like you tease someone because of his appearance. You make fun of that person every day. Right? Do you call that friendly behavior? Would you like this to happen to you every day? No, we would not like it. But supposing every day you came to school and someone was there standing there uh, the door of the class uh, and uh, teasing you about your appearance, about your name, about uh, your dress, everything. Would you like coming to such a classroom? Would you? No, you would not. Right? So this story, it's about that. It is about understanding that people can be different. They can have different names than we have. 
they can look different. The color of the skin can be different. The hair could be different. And the eating habits different. The names different. The culture different. So we have to open up our minds to the differences that are in society. But no, what do we do? We stare and stare and we make that person so uncomfortable. Right? So we, we should not do that. We should try to make that person comfortable. So if there's a newcomer in your class, what are you going to do? You will try to make that person comfortable. Right? You'll make that person feel happy here that I have come to this class and yeah, I have nice friends people who are understanding instead of just standing there and making fun. This story, it's about a young girl, Wanda Petronsky. She is a Polish immigrant. Who are immigrants? People who have left the country and gone and settled other places, right? Polish, from Poland. So many people are there from the, you can say Polish community in the United States, right? And in fact, there are so many people from so many communities over there. But how do the people over there, how do the local people, how do the Americans, how do they behave? Have they accepted them? Do they make fun of them? Do they keep on reminding them that you don't belong here? So it's not a nice thing to do, right? So, and once again here, if someone is not as well off as you, if her uniform or his uniform is not, you know, like sparkling new like yours, but it is an old uniform, a clean uniform, are you going to make fun of that person? No, we should not, right? So this chapter teaches us that let us try to understand our differences. Let us try to overcome this differences, okay? Now, this story is a sensitive account of how a poor young girl is judged by her classmates. Wanda Petronsky is a young Polish girl who goes to school with other American children in an American town. These other children see Wanda as different in many. Can you guess how we treat them? So sometimes what happens, you know, like we have a mindset about a particular community or a particular religion or a particular country. And it is so difficult for us to change our opinion. So this is what has happened with Wanda. She has come over here and she's going to the school. Will her classmates accept her? Right? Now here it is about the Polish community where all they are settled and how they have, uh, you know, like uh, settled in various parts of America. And Chicago is the second largest Polish city, only next to the capital of Poland, right? So they have been discriminated, just like other people from different other communities, like the Irish, the Italians, and the Jews. So, right, what, and it is not a nice thing to do, what we are going to read about in this chapter. Today, Monday, Wanda Petronsky was not in her seat. But nobody, not even Peggy and Madeline, the girls who started all the fun, noticed her absence. Who are the three girls over here? We have Wanda Petronsky, we have Peggy, Madeline, or Maddie, as she's going to be called. Usually, Wanda sat in the seat next to the last seat in the last row in room 13. What is room 13? Room 13 is a classroom. Right? Where did Wanda sit? She sat next to the last seat in the last row. She sat in the corner of the room where the rough boys who did not make good marks sit. Rough boys, the rowdy boys, the talkative boys, so there is a particular corner in the classroom where those boys sat. And Wanda went and sat over there in that corner. The corner of the room where there was most scuffling of feet. Scuffling. The noise of the feet. Yeah, you don't lift it up from the ground. You're dragging your feet here. Yeah, right? Imitating sound. Most roars of laughter when anything funny was said. And most mud and dirt on the floor. In short, the naughtiest, loudest corner of the classroom. So we all have that row, we all have that corner in the classroom where the most talkative students sit 
with the people like they'll keep on disturbing the teacher they'll keep on disturbing the students so we all have it or not yes we all have that uh, corner in our classroom right no you not oh really well i i think so we do where or you sit with your friends and you make a lot of noise and lots of disturbances okay wanda did not sit there because she was rough and noisy so why did wanda go and sit in the corner she was not a rough and noisy girl she was not a talkative girl she was not one who got less marks on the contrary she was very quiet and rarely said anything at all she was a very quiet girl she rarely spoke and nobody had ever heard her laugh out loud and uh, yeah when the other boys and the girls were laughing at the jokes they were laughing at what is happening in the class she always kept quiet she never laughed sometimes she twisted her mouth into a crooked sort of smile but that was also sometimes not all the time yeah there was a smile on her face but she did not roar with laughter and uh, you know created this circle in the class then why did she go and sit in that corner she was not talkative she was not disobedient she was not noisy why did she go and sit over there nobody knew exactly why wanda sat in that place unless it was because she came all the way from bogins heights and her feet were usually caked with dry mud but no one really thought about much about wanda petonsky once she sat in the corner of the room nobody bothered also why did she sit over there it could be that she came from bogins heights bogins heights is not one of the you can say the very well off area of the city so she came from there and uh, she walked to school and by the time she reached school her feet were uh, shoes were covered with mud right so maybe people thought that, that is why she went and sat over there so that she could would not spoil the class again and again or maybe she was not happy showing her muddy shoes but no one thought much about that and she went and sat in the corner the time when they thought about wanda was outside of school hours at noon when they were coming back to school or in the morning early before school began when groups of two or three or even more would be talking and laughing on the way to the school yard so when did they think about wanda when she was in the class no one bothered about her when did they think about her before school began and after school got over why then sometimes they waited for wanda to have fun with her is it nice to make fun of somebody is it nice to wait for someone every day that i am going to make fun of her but here yes the students they did not notice her when she was in the classroom but they definitely waited for her when before the school or after the school got over the next tuesday Wanda was not in school either, and nobody noticed her absence again. So she was not such a prominent figure. She was not so talkative, and uh, you know, like uh, he was so loud and noisy. Her absence was not noticed. But on Wednesday, Peggy and Maddie were sat down front with other children who got good marks, and who didn't track in a whole lot of mud. Didn't notice that Wanda wasn't there. Monday she was not there. Tuesday she was not there. But on Wednesday, Peggy and Maddie noticed. Oh my God! What's happened to this girl? She's not in school again. Why? Peggy was the most popular girl in school. Popular, many people knew her, and it's not necessary that she had uh, so many friends also. But she was quite a known person in the school. She was pretty. She had many pretty clothes. and her hair was curly so this could also be one of the reasons of her popularity she was a pretty girl and she wore pretty clothes to school and her hair was curly nadi was her closest friend so peggy and nadi two girls good friends the reason peggy and nadi noticed wanda's absence was because wanda had made them late to school so why they noticed her absence that they got late for the class they had waited and waited for wanda to have some fun with her and she just had to come 
We often waited for Wanda Petrovsky to have fun with her. What do you think uh, to have fun with her means? What do you think it means to have fun with her? Yes? What does it mean to have fun with her? To tease her? Right? To stop her before she goes to the class, ask her questions. And uh, yeah, when she gave the answers, they would laugh. So was it a nice thing to do? When did these girls realize when on the third day also she did not turn up? And they got late because they were waiting for her. Right? Now, where in the classroom does Wanda sit and why? Where did she sit in the classroom? She sat next to the last seat. And in the corner where there were a lot of noisy boys, that was where she sat. Where does Wanda live? Wanda lives in Boggins Heights. Please write down the answers on your books or underline them. What kind of a place do you think it is? Is it a very good place? No, it is not. And it is not, uh, you know, like very developed because by the time Wanda reaches the school, her feet are covered with mud. Her shoes are covered with mud. When and why do Peggy and Maddie notice Wanda's absence? When do they notice her absence? When they got late for class. And what do you think to have fun with her means? Yes? To make fun? Is to tease her, to laugh at her. Yes, to tease Wanda. Okay, right.